Hey everybody, it's Brick Waffle, and today we are going to do a very exciting project. But before we get started with that, I want to show you one of the small things I was working on during the week. I think this is working okay. So let's see if we can fly over here and take a look at this automation for Botania. So this appears to have run through all of its uh, materials, but what this was doing, and let's see if we can just grab a little bit of this here. Let's see, grab a couple of these. When we fill this with different materials, oops, and that's an MP5, that's not what we wanted. When we fill this with materials, the bot placers are going to place those down for us. This pure daisy is eventually going to convert that into living rock. And then we have a timer over here that will automatically trigger the block breakers above it to crack that, put it into some chests, and route that into our storage network. So this is an easy way for me to fill up all the wood I want on one side, all the stone I want on the other, and churn through, get a whole bunch of living rock and living wood. And right out here, this little savanna is what we're going to use for our new project. So one thing that's probably not obvious from looking at this is that this has actually all been ender quarried from right about down that corner to all the way back in about that corner. So everything under here is just dirt. The reason I did that is because this is where we're going to build the expansion of our base. So from this chalet, which is what we're now going to call the mountain house, thanks to my wife for that name, this chalet is going to remain here. This is going to be our nice little house where I come and I spend the night when I need to sleep and make it daytime and I just want to enjoy the view back there. But all these little devices we've put in, like the alveary, the portal to the deep dark, our little um, arrangement here for making soul shards, the mob farms, all the automation in the basement, that's all going to go into little buildings down here in New Brick Town. So what I wanted to do was be able to use this just for purely aesthetic terrain and not have to worry about running into veins of coal or other things when I'm, when I'm working. It's just going to be dirt. That means we can use our excavator if we're digging out a base. It's going to be very effective. Uh, you can see I started clearing this area. I will probably make a sickle from Project Red to clear out some more of this because quite honestly that's just too much stuff on the grass. And we do have a little water spring here so we'll probably put in a well of some kind since that makes some sense. And then the only other thing that we had here, and this is an interesting side effect from the ender quarry, because that replaces all of its blocks with dirt, there used to be a witch's ring around here, and it replaced all of the witch's ring and turned that into dirt as well. So I left a little bit of this. I thought we might use this same layout for something else. Maybe we'll put a little uh, Batania garden in here or something like that, use that same space. But otherwise, you can see the weirdest thing that happened with this, besides the sheep in the tree, is that half of this ravine was turned into dirt and you can see there's enough light here for the grass to spread and that is very very bizarre let's turn on our night vision helm and you can see that all the way through here is just dirt a dirt ravine and then this is where it stopped in this room hello skeleton goodbye skeleton and it's just something you don't see very often I thought this was kind of unusual so I'm gonna keep this here for now um, and we will probably end up coming down here and coring out especially for Emmy there's a lot of certus quartz over here that's kinda nice looks like some malachite I thought, I thought that was just so bizarre when that happened. I knew it would happen, um, and then the same thing with this cave. You can see it just goes down in here. It's all big dirt hole with more skeletons. Goodbye. Um, I think that has potential. We also have this volcano that we've had since the beginning. We haven't done anything with basalt yet. We'll probably do that soon, and we'll probably make a proper dock for the airship as well. So this is obviously going to be a huge project. I'm not going to get all of that done in one video for sure. I have started turning off some of the machines, like our rubber tree farm. We have plenty of rubber right now. Uh, you can tell from the fact that all this cotton is sitting here, fully grown and not harvested, that we haven't done anything with that yet either. This is the one that concerns me a little bit. This is a full mana pool, and I'm not sure if I can break that and keep all the mana in it. But it's okay, because we're going to, before we leave, produce a lot more of these and set up a bigger Batania garden. That'll be another project. So obviously I have a list of a lot of things that I'd like to accomplish. And the good news is, because we are already wearing, oh yes, our ridiculous fancy armor. We now have the flux armor. You can probably tell from the UI down there. With the Skyrim helm and our gold wings, I think I look hysterical. We do have our riot gear, so I have an MP5 and a shield. We also have a pair of soul-stealing enders that are fully charged for killing endermen and getting pearls. And now we have our imbued tools. So thanks to King Daddy Dmac, one of the Hermitcraft Hermits, for uh, showing that in one of his videos. I went out and realized that we had plenty of wither skulls from our wither farm. And now I have some ridiculous looking, very powerful tools. That's going to make a lot of this a lot easier. So we'll probably not work necessarily level by level, although moving some storage over and a smeltery is probably going to be a fairly easy thing to do. We will eventually move the portal array. I'm not looking forward to that. That's going to be uh, fairly time consuming to reconnect all of these. Although for everyone else on the server that's connected to me, it won't have any effect as long as we use the same code. So that will be pretty nice. 
And I'm thinking about putting in a second one of these, just a portal from somewhere down there right into the chalet. I might do that up in the bedroom, or I might look at mechanism portals. I haven't really decided yet. And down here we have our QED, our Tinker's Forge. I've never liked the way that this shows up in the lower layers, so what we're going to do is if we dig down for basements in the other, uh, in the new base area, we're going to keep a floor level of three blocks, and that way we can have a ceiling, whatever stuff we need to run, like pipes and tubes and things, and then a floor level, and we'll never see stuff like this poking through. Um, and we do have a very large capacitor bank with, what is that, 180 million RF stored from our solar array in the mining world. That seems to be a very cheap source of easy power. Um, and that is going into my Tesseract, which you can see we also have one for, uh, called Tesla that Sonata Block set up with his big reactor. If people want to borrow power for projects, they're welcome to do that. And then, of course, down here we have Little Brick. I built myself a robot. I built one for a couple of other people on the server as well. And we have some mechanism machines over here. We have some Ender I.O. and thermal expansion machines on this array. We're going to do a proper machine shop in the village, and we'll put this in a much nicer configuration where you don't have to see all the pipes underneath it. Um, maybe give it a little bit more space and really the biggest reason to do all of this moving is look at this place if I look down you can't tell whether I'm in my base or I'm in a cave that's disappointing so we're gonna do all of this to make it look a lot nicer this is another project that's gonna be kinda tedious to move I haven't ever tried taking the singularity out of that but it looks like we can so that's good and we might do a separate small ME network without a quantum ring just a controller and a few crafting stations to do some things like automatically compressing cobble a lot faster than using auto, auto workbenches uh, we also do have our elite factories for mechanisms so we have everything set up for 3x ore processing that's pretty convenient we also have the electrolytic separator and that looks like an empty water tank so something's going on there we'll have to go check that out in a minute but it has produced plenty of hydrogen and oxygen and we can throw our ores in here we have a spare oxygen tank and we will get three times the ingots out of that we also have a sag mill with an adjustable chest that's producing infinite cobblestone so that has a cobble generation upgrade so once you put a lava in a water bucket it just makes infinite cobble that feeds into this sag mill which is producing sand and very occasionally a piece of gravel as well going into the same chest that we can't open anymore but that's all feeding into the ME network so if we come over here and we take a look we have quite a bit of sand. We have 105,000 sand, and you can see every now and then it's going to go up a little bit. There it goes. There it goes again. You can see that every two seconds or so we're getting a sand. Um, that's ridiculous, but you can also see that if you look at gravel, we've got quite a bit of that as well. So it's coming in pretty nicely. If we ever need sand or gravel or cobble for anything, the adjustable chests make that ridiculously easy. Uh, we have played around with Flans Mod. I showed you that MP5 before, so we'll move a couple of things over there. Flans mod is interesting, but honestly I don't think it's a terribly resource efficient way to kill monsters using MP5 ammunition that takes iron and gunpowder. It's fun, but it's not very effective. So that's most of our projects. Most of the other things we have, this little mining portal, or mining world portal for convenience sake over the mining world. That's nice, it's not critical. When you come back through, you end up in the village anyway. Um, those aren't going to be too difficult to bring down. And we are going to turn off a few bits of our machinery here, like this farm we have set up that you can probably tell is currently collecting blazes, blizzes, rather, not blazes, and creepers. So we're going to have plenty of jelly cryothium and also gunpowder. Uh, and in that regard, actually getting the ammunition for the MP5 wouldn't be too bad. One thing I am considering is getting some soul shards and finding or making a few iron golems. Um, I know it would take a lot of iron to make 64 iron golems and kill them, but once we did, we could then have an infinite steady supply of iron using the soul shards and those iron spikes. So that may be something else to consider in the future, depending on how much iron we use in this build. So I'm going to go ahead and go in, get some sleep, make it daytime, and gather some materials, and then we will start laying out some of our buildings. One of the other goals with this new change of pace is that I want to use the chisel mod a lot more, so you can see I'm experimenting with some different designs here. Please do let me know what you think in the comments. We have some of this limestone with ornate panel, large limestone tiles, and small limestone bricks. I want to make the floors a little bit more decorative, as you, as you probably heard just a few minutes ago. One of my complaints is that basic stone look in my base everywhere. You can't really tell what you're looking at. It just looks like raw caves. Hopefully this will give it a little bit more appeal. And this kind of layout here is going to be for our smeltery area, so let me go ahead and disassemble that, and I'm going to start putting it together back over here. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to put down our smeltery base, and I'm trying to decide, I think I want to bury the floor of it in here, and I think I'm going to put it in one corner of this. Um, so we're going to need the edges that are going to be the walls, that means this spot right here. And let's carve this out. That would be our 3x3 area, and that's what I'm talking about with the dirt. 
So that gives us room to have the smeltery over here. We can expand it out a little bit, but that's definitely going to fit. And then we're going to expand this platform, maybe this direction. Uh, we're going to put on some of the uh, Tinker's Construct tool forges, and we're probably going to leave this as an open kind of blacksmith plaza with a big smeltery tank that's nice and visible from everywhere. You'll be able to see what it is. And I am going to do some automation, but I'm going to use ender tanks and ender chests to move everything in and out of where we want it to go. So we don't have to run a lot of pipes everywhere. We can use a couple of pipes and some conduit facade. That should look pretty good. So let's see if we can find that dirt block. There it is. Let's put that lava tank away for now. Let's put that in, and we will start putting in the floor of our smeltery. And then we want to come around back here. And I know we're going to take a few of these out here in a second, but that's going to give us, whoops, that's going to give us the shape that we're going to use for the smeltery. How's that looking? That's okay. I think having it in the corner will be fine once we get the rest of this expanded out. I just want to make sure I had at least enough room for that. Now what we want to do is figure out where we're going to put our smeltery controllers and our tanks. And I had drawn some of this out on paper. You may hear some of that rustling around. I think what we're going to do is we're going to put our smeltery controller there. And then underneath that in the, ch in the floor, we're going to put our input chest with a pipe that goes into it. Then we're going to have some glass in the front here. We're going to have our faucet right there. We're going to have another faucet here. And that's okay that I took this one out because that's also going to be glass. And then I think this is going to be the smeltery tank. So let's see if we can get that put in. So where's the smeltery controller I said was going to go right here. But let's not do that just yet. We're going to need to go get some ender conduit. We'll do that one very last. Uh, some seared glass. We're going to have one there and I believe one there. We're going to have our smeltery drains here and here. Although those may go up a level here in a minute. And then our seared tank that way. So as far as collecting the items in this, we can leave the faucets here and put the casting tables in the ground, or I think what might be better is to raise this whole thing up by one and put these faucets where it's a little bit higher and you can put the tanks underneath. We can still put uh, collection conduits and whatnot underneath them, but that's going to make it a little bit easier if that's kind of at, at uh, head level to change things out. I don't think we want people walking right where liquid hot metal is coming out of there. Uh, and of course, yes, as soon as I said that, I, ha I heard the Dr. Evil voice as well. Sorry about that. That was not my intention. Uh, let's see. Put a seared brick there and there, and we're going to put the drains there and there. And the reason we're doing this in the corner like this is we're going to put our redstone clock, uh, wherever that is. We're going to see if we, this will work for one of these to control both of those. Now, I think it has to power the faucet, but we'll see if this powers the block which powers the faucet or if this design doesn't work. Uh, we're going to have to build a little bit more of the machine before we can see if this is a good idea or not. Worst case, we might be able to move that to the ground and run some redstone wire, red alloy wire up there to power it. And we'll obviously want to put something under here, but I think what we'll probably do if we get this working is put one of the ore conversion dictionary tables under there. That should look pretty nice. But this way we can put our casting tables there. We'll be able to automate underneath that and have everything go into a chest that will bury and we will control all of that with conduit facade. Actually, that might be something else we could do. We could just put our ender chest right under here and have our pipes running visibly into that. That might look okay, actually. So we're going to keep our seared glass here and here. But now that I've done that, that looks kind of strange to have the seared glass with the limestone brick underneath it. So we are going to come back and take that block out. And let's take that guy out. And how much more? we got plenty of that left right now because we haven't gone up very high. We'll do that. That's going to look a lot better. And we'll be able to see the level of the molten liquids in here pretty easily. So the next thing we want to do is get a chest which we don't have on us and we want to get some item conduit but we can hook up the lava tank so let's see that's going to need to go back off of this and then can we get him under here? Perfect. We can do that. Let's not use the imbued pick for that one. That's going to give us an infinite source of lava from the nether for that yeah, I'm thinking this is going to look out. This is going to look pretty good. So the rest of this, once we get it done, we'll get the smeltery controller, some pipe, and we'll get a conduit facade. Then all we have to do is raise the thing all the way up as high as we want it to go. So I'll be right back when I have some of those materials. Okay, we are on our way back, and let's go ahead and try the smeltery before we bother decorating everything. Make sure this all works the way we expect it to. Throw some copper in there. What happened to that? Oh, because we're dumb. Yeah, so if you actually have something extracting out of your smeltery controller, that's bad news. Um, that's not what that's supposed to do. This is supposed to be the input chest, and the extraction chest needs to be over here. So what I did was I just took all the copper I brought over 
and threw it right back on the network. So we're not going to need that guy, and we're not going to need that one. But we are going to need to put the ender chest over here and set these to connect to him. So that should pull in from both of these without taking out unsmelted ore. Uh, now we're going to need another chest that's going to connect into this one. Uh, let's see, we don't need an ender chest for that, we just need a regular chest. And that's going to need to be set to input. And do we have any more ore on us? We do not. So <laughs> that's embarrassing, but I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, we've got some chests, we've got some copper ore, this should be a lot better. Let's plop this guy down here. And this needs to be set to extract to put into there, always active. Now if we put the copper ore in this chest, it goes into our smeltery, that's excellent. Now it's cooking up. We're going to use some fuel here, we'll give that a second. Let's go ahead and put some of this dirt back. This is the high degree of confidence I have in this build that I'm going to go ahead and put all this back the way it's supposed to look. That is a surefire recipe for me for getting something. But we're going to pretend like that's not the case. We're going to put all this in, give ourselves something to do for a minute while we're waiting on that to cook up. And let's see. That goes there. That goes there. State on. I think that's going to power the redstone clock off, actually, because it's on by default. So if that all works, I don't like how that's not quite lined up with this one. We might actually move that one over one more, but we'll see in a minute. This does let us walk up here, dump everything in this chest and walk away if we've got a bunch of ore, let it smelt, and then it goes into the network. Now eventually we could replace this with an ME terminal with an export bus and a bunch of filters on it, or a bunch of export buses with filters on it to extract ores directly. But honestly, with the mechanism three times ore reprocessing, we're not going to do this with ores very often. Mostly we're going to be using this to melt ingots to make tools specifically, or we're going to use it for things that we just can't either can't or don't want to run through mechanism, and let's not jump in there. That would be very embarrassing. Uh, what we can do is break this glass when this is done here in a minute, because I do have some more of that on me. I've got 12 more, which means this can go up by five on either side. And I think that's all the taller we want to make it. We might not even need it to be that tall, to be honest. Since this is not, as I said, producing our primary source of ingots, really it's going to be for tools. Uh, which again may mean this clock is irrelevant. We don't need that at all if we're only using this to make a few tool parts here and there. And there we go, we have some molten copper. 16 ingots worth. So, moment of truth. And nothing happens. Okay, so, oh, now it's working again. Interesting, but only one of them is. Did I just power that... I did, I powered that one faucet with a lever. Okay, so that redstone clock doesn't have any effect. We are going to have to think about a different way to do this. But as I said, since this is mostly going to be for parts, that's going to be our solution for the time being. And since we don't really need copper tools, we're going to queue through the, the uh, what is that, 12 left in here? Oops. That's not what I wanted. 12 ingots left. Good. My math skills are improving. Let's go ahead and do that. So we just need to do this six more times. And once that goes through, and that looks like it's all going into the network, it's going into this chest. We can see that here in a second when those cool, they'll briefly show up in there, and they get extracted out to the network very quickly. So that's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and take this block out, and then we're going to want to take this one out as well. And good, we didn't lose any into the molten metal. We're going to bring those up. Let's go ahead and clear this out, just because I don't want to fall in there with its seared tank full of molten liquid metal and die. That would be unfortunate because I believe that's just like lava it will actually destroy your gear as well although that's not true with the death ender chest so maybe I don't have anything to worry about other than just being embarrassed and uh, if there's one thing I've learned from doing this on YouTube you're gonna get embarrassed many many times so you gotta get over that early on alright so let's I keep forgetting I can fly in this server which makes it pretty nice that is going to be a ridiculously tall smeltery uh, Honestly, for something that's just for tools, that's really too much. I don't. I think I'm going to bring this down by three. Ooh. Maybe I did by three. That looks like a good height, so let's go there. This imbued pickaxe is so good, it's broken. I really, really enjoy that. Uh, let's put this on here. One, two. It is getting to be nighttime again. Some zombies are coming out to help with the construction. Uh, maybe he wants to put some blood in the Tinker's smeltery. Uh, yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. So we can leave this out here. And that should work just fine. 
One thing we could do is put more glass in over here and here. So we would have that one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And of course I have six on me, so I can't quite do eight that way. Or we could take these two out and leave those as seared bricks in the bottom. Ooh, that went right through. You know what? I have an imbued sword. What am I waiting on? <laughs> and there's a spirit as well. Hey. Okay. Good. Looks like he's not going to bother us anymore. Let's see if this is actually deadly or not. Oh, even better. I don't have to touch it. And let's see. Take that guy out and put that one there. Take those out. Let's try it. Okay, it is not deadly when there's not molten metal in it. I've been very nervous to try that, you might have noticed, but now we know for sure that's excellent to know. And the one thing that we had going for us on the previous one was this was capped off with some uh, half slabs. Uh, we might consider doing that again. We probably want to do that for the most part. I know you can drag like a horse into a smeltery to make glue. Uh, honestly, with a rubber farm we have set up, we shouldn't need glue for anything that I'm aware of, so we'll probably leave that alone. Um, I'm thinking with the way this lines up with this edge, and this lines up with this edge, that we don't want to go further out this direction. We just want to go out this way, as I mentioned earlier, so I think I'm going to stick with that plan. Um, let's go ahead and cap this off. So we're just going to throw a dirt block up here for a second to give us a starting point. Put that there. And no more curious onlookers are going to be killed. So now we just need a sign that says how many days without accident, and we are good to go. So, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. It gives us a little bit of space here. I don't like that that disappears when I mouse over it, but, you know, what are you going to do? We've got plenty of these left over. We can, I think, repaint conduit facades. I could be wrong, um, but we can try that out in a little bit. Let's go ahead and move those out of our inventory. Oh, we were going to put some speed upgrades on here, but I don't know that we need to because, actually, we don't really need this chest at all. You know, if the purpose of this is just for tools, we don't need any of this piping at all. We can just throw the handful of things we need in the smeltery and then make our tools and then put it away. In fact, this is probably overly tall as well. But let's go ahead and uh, we'll get back to that in just a minute. I'll do a little cleanup there. I'm going to expand this out a little bit and move those tool benches from inside the house back over to here. Okay, so we've got our octagon filled in. I started placing a couple of stairs. I'm not sure that I like these. I think those are a little too distracting. Um, but I really like the way this octagon tank looks now that we got those carpenter's wedges in there. I did go ahead and move the ore conversion table down here in the corner. Um, I think it looks okay. It has a nice symmetry with these two tables. And I'd also buried the ender tank underneath this instead of keeping it on the side here. I think that's fine. This almost never breaks. If we do, all we have to do to reset that ender tank is to go to the nether and break and replace the endothermic pump. So we should never have to access that tank again. Um, I'm still not thrilled with the pattern chest here. I'm just going to remove it for now, and I'll find another place to put that at some point. Um, but you can see that we just need to put in some stairs around here, and we will have our nice little outdoor smeltery area. This will be the beginning of our blacksmith shop. And let's try a couple of other stair patterns with the chisel mod here. What stairs would look good with this? I don't want to do anything ornate with the gold in it. Uh, maybe if we had a few of these here and there, and the rest of them were um, regular... What is that? Limestone stairs. Maybe maybe if the rest of these were just kind of the small brick ones and then a few of them here and there had that pattern, that would look okay. So let's take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those and then do the rest of them as these. Let's see what that would look like. So we'll just come across here like that. We'll leave a gap. And then in that gap, we're going to put a couple of these. Yeah, yeah, I think that'll look okay. Uh, that almost looks a little too purposefully planned, so we're going to just take that one out. Um, whoops, man, that, Im that imbued tool is something else. Um, so let's put one in there. Oh, that's not what we wanted to do. Let's take it out this way. And we just want to have it look like some of these got worn off because we've had a lot of use up and down. So to this crafting table, over to this area, um, maybe to the back side over here. Probably one on this side, and that's probably good. We don't want it to look too overdone. We just want it to show where there's been some wear and tear over the years making this look older than it is. I think that's really what we're going for. So we're just going to come along this way. Okay, and have I mentioned how much easier it is building in survival when you can fly? That is outstanding. So I really like the look of this. I think this is going to be a good foundation. Uh, we are going to do a little bit more terraforming over here. 
And I don't think I'm going to bother with the sickle until we're pretty happy with the way that most of this village is laid out. And we want to clear some greenways, uh, some areas for us to have in between. Although maybe some of this stuff right around here could go away. The other thing we're going to have to consider is when we get some more buildings in here, what does the road look like? But man, that's looking pretty happy right now. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with that. One thing I wish you could do is have Carpenter's Wedge half slab so I could put this all the way out to the top and have a nice smooth cap. Um, I can't do that, unfortunately. That's not the end of the world. We could probably, though, now that I'm thinking about it, what about those oblique slopes we looked at earlier? Could we do something with that? Nope. That's this guy. And oblique exterior slopes. Maybe that was the one I needed. That is exactly what I wanted. So we can do these guys. Oop, not that one. This guy needs to go away. And then we can just do some uh, regular seared bricks at the top and cap that off. So you can imagine what this is going to look like, but we've got four right now. Let's go ahead and put those on. So then the question becomes, do we use half slabs here and leave these kind of dangerous looking points, or do we sear brick here and leave that cap? I think we're going to put sear bricks on the top and make this pretty uniform. Um, but let me go get some more seared bricks. I think I might actually have to cook some up, cook some grout, and get back to you here in just a minute. Okay, and we are done. I put in some oblique slopes so that it all kind of connects together. I'm not super thrilled with the way this turned out. I might actually end up putting this in with a wedge slope and beveling it all around. Um, but for now, I think that's going to do it. That looks like everything I wanted to get accomplished in this episode. So thank you guys for being patient and watching me derp around a little bit, making some kind of beginner mistakes on a few of those things. I haven't played a lot with Chisel, believe it or not, so that's a, a fun thing for me to try out. If you guys have other suggestions, I would love to hear what else you'd like to see me build in town. I already have plans, like I said, for bringing in all the different devices and machines over there, making a machine shop, some kind of computer room, which I will promptly bury, uh, and then different buildings for Botania. I want to have a garden over there. Lots and lots of stuff, so there's going to be plenty to do with this series. If you did enjoy this video, please do leave it a like. If you really enjoyed it, then please subscribe. And, as always, I have a brick waffle. Thank you for watching.